CataractCoach.com. Post your polar or post your subcapsular. This is what you see. You tell me now. What's your approach? This is me operating. I'm going to do a complete cataract case, first incision to the end of the case. I'm going to show you the whole dang case. So if you don't have seven minutes and change to spare, don't watch it. But if you want to learn something, learn from me. Here's the thing that really confounded me. I look at this patient and I look at that red reflex and I think, gosh, is that just posterior subcapsular or is that posterior polar? Both eyes look like this. The patient and eh, not the best historian can't really tell you if they were ever told before they had posterior polar. You don't know. All you know is what you see. The patient's about 60 years old. Obviously comes in with bad vision. You see that big central posterior opacity. What is it? So did you decide yet? Is it posterior polar or PSC? And you know you have to figure this out because what do you do? Are you going to do hydrodissection like a normal case? Or are you going to do just hydrodelineation and viscodissection? Well, first things first, let's start with a rexus. Definitely make a 5 millimeter rexus. Because just in case you have to place the haptics and the sulcus and three-piece uh, lens there and capture the optic behind the rexus, at least, if you have a 5 millimeter good centered up rexus, it'll make life easier and give you more options. So we want to make sure we take our time on that. And that rexus looks pretty reasonable. Let's see if we can finish that up. And I think you'll agree that's a pretty good rexus, about 5 millimeters. Now, again, what's your decision? Tell me. Hydrodissection or not? Yes or no? Come on. Commit to it. Say it in your mind. Come on. You got this. I'm just going to do it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling hydro dissection. I'm just gonna go for it. And I'm watching really carefully. Is there any change? Does the, the AC slightly deepen? Is there some weakness or deepening of the posterior chamber? Is there a split of the capsule? Do I notice any instability of the lens? So far, so good. Kinda seems okay. So did I make the right choice? Well, time's gonna tell. So I got the nucleus partially out of the capsule bag, so we did hydrodissection. And as you know, if it was a true posterior polar only, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd be cautious. But let's chop the nucleus here. It's partially out of the bag. There's two halves. As you know, once we got two halves, come on, let's just wolf down these two halves, make short work of this. And I'll tell you, I'm a little bit nervous thinking, okay, I'm just going to focus on removing the lens nuclear pieces right now. I'll try to take a little look back there. Let me make sure. So far, nothing's falling back. It seems pretty stable. There's good motion throughout the AC. The pieces aren't getting stuck. I don't hear like vitreous ding, 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 occlusion on the machine. I'm pretty happy. So I'm hopeful. Is everything okay? But this is a case where as I'm doing it, I'm just thinking, okay, what if? What if? Was this a posture polar and I missed it? Or I just denied it and went and made that decision for PSC? If that's the case, I may be in some trouble here. But I know one thing is, now we're in the eye. Let's just get the nuclear pieces out. Get them out. We'll make a decision afterwards. But at this point, focus, focus, focus. Getting the nuclear pieces out of the eye. Keep the chopper in that safe position. Don't let any pieces fall back. Don't let the pieces fall back onto the macula just in case the bag's open. And then here's the last piece. And you know what? It's looking pretty good now. Now I can take a peek back there and say, you know what? Looks like it's a pretty reasonably intact bag. Everything looks fine there. I don't see any issues. So, hey, a PSC. I made the decision. So I show you this case just because I want you to know that even after tens of thousands of cataract surgeries, I'll go in here and there'll be cases like this where, you know, I kind of question it. And I kind of have to make a decision on the spot. And sometimes the best is to not overthink it. You know, you take a multiple choice test when you're in school, the MCAT or the SAT or whatever else that now the woke people have deemed unconscionable. But you took that test and you didn't know the correct answer 100%. But for some reason, you thought that one of those five answers of the multiple choice was just, just kind of made sense to you, and you went with it, and you realized, yeah, especially when you have experience, always trust your gut. And this is one of those cases where I didn't know 100% sure was it posterior polar or PSC 
Well, obviously, look at the video here. It turned out to be PSC. So it's not that big of a deal. But I have to like be cautious here and take it one step at a time and then ultimately, again, trust my judgment. If I look at that multiple choice question and I know the five answers, I say, you know what? Answer B, just like, it just makes the most sense to me. I'm going to go with it. And the majority of the time, your initial gut instinct was right. You trust your gut for a reason. It's not 100%. You can't be fooled. But it does give you valuable information. It's kind of your brain's way of saying, hey, listen, based upon all our previous experience, for whatever reason, I'm telling you that this seems okay, and you're going to go with that. And so now here at the end of the case, look at that lens in the bag, good-looking Rexus. Let's get underneath there, remove that viscoelastic. We'll clean this case up very nicely. This patient was blown away happy the next day. Just an incredible result, such a sweet patient, such a pleasure for us to do surgery for her. So I show you this video because I want you to be able to develop that surgical intuition, the surgical gut instinct. And it's not easy to develop in less than a thousand cases, but once you've done a few thousand and you get past 10,000 cases, let's say, you will develop a surgical intuition that will really save you time and time again. And you got to learn to just trust that. So when you're doing a case, use whatever your best judgment is. Look at the situation and say, you know what? Based on my many years of operating and thousands upon thousands of cases, I think the answer is PSC, not posterior polar. And I think we're going to be okay. And we're going to do a hydro dissection. And you know what? I'm placing my bet and we're going to make this happen. And you know what? The majority of the time we're going to be right. Vast majority of the time. So never discount your actual clinical experience, your surgical experience, because that just helps form a knowledge base that you just know in your gut, in your heart, in your brain, and that really helps you deliver the best quality of care. And it's one of those things where this may be a harder thing to teach a new computer in the future when you have those robots that do cataract surgery without a surgeon in the room, is the robot AI going to be enough to figure this out? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But I bet you in the rest of my lifetime, I'd rather have a really skilled human in charge of my surgery. And in the case here, there's a little LRI. You know we got to fix out that astigmatism. we got to stamp out astigmatism and get the patient a beautiful refractive result. Our goal is Plano in 2020 on post-op day one.